Hello, hello. It's Elizabeth Busby here. Happy New Year 2023. You guys, every year that passes, I'm like, how is it 2023? I remember the year 2000 and some of you might not. Um, It's so fun to like have this time passing and I'm so excited that you're joining us for this first uh, episode of 2023. Of course, if this isn't your first episode of 2023, this is still super relevant to you, but for some of you it is and I'm excited about it. So thank you so much for joining me for the Discerning Marriage Podcast. I'm very excited about my guest today. I am joined by Melissa Tablada. Hi, Melissa. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) I'm so excited too. So you guys, Melissa and I actually connected through a mutual friend like five or six years ago, something like that. Um, And this friend of mine was like going to her wedding and she was like, oh my gosh, she's like, were you you a therapist already or were you still studying? I was just finished with my degree. Yeah, I finished my degree in 2017. So I was working by then. Uh Okay, so we were like about the same place and this friend was like, you guys would really connect well. And so we like texted back and forth a little and then the Lord has done incredible things in both of our work and both of our ministry and both of our vocations. And this is really the first time we're getting to like connect like this uh, on video call. So it's really fun. We did a lot of texting Um, and now here we are. So I'm excited to chat with her and I'm excited for you guys to get to join us. So we're going to be talking about holistic health, which is kind of like a lot of people are thinking about health in January and February at the beginning of the year. So the time, the Lord's timing is just so perfect. So um, let me give you a little bit of background or maybe do you want to give your own background or do you want me to like intro you about like why you're worth listening to on this subject? (laughs) I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. So she's a therapist as we decide, as we described um, in Florida, are you a marriage and family therapist or are you an individual therapist? Marriage and family? Uh, so my license and degree is marriage and family, but I primarily work with individuals. Cool. Okay. And she also does coaching, which is awesome because um, therapy is very specific. You have a licensing board. You have to be in a certain state and there are rules, tons of rules. And coaching gives you the opportunity to work all over. So I have personally referred people like from Europe to you, Melissa, because I know I'm like, I don't know who the therapists are in England, but I got a coach for you who can work on different things in therapy, but there's still some goals you can yeah. meet. So she does that. She also is a Creighton practitioner, which may mean nothing to some of you, and it will by the end of this. So we'll talk about that, which is effectively reproductive health, um, which is so important. And she also does this really cool physical health thing called Soul Core. So she has like all sorts of different physical, mental, reproductive. There's just a lot of health stuff Melissa has going on, and I'm so excited to chat with her. So. How you doing? Are you good? Are you ready to get started? I'm good. Yeah, let's get started. Perfect. Oh, and you've been married for five years, six years, yes. how many years? Um, so we've been married since April 2018, so four and a half years. Okay. And we have a son who is about a year and a half old, just over, and then our daughter is due in 10 days. <laughs> so by the time you guys see this, she will be here one way or another. <laughs> so she has two kids. Awesome. Okay. Love that she is so, like, it's because she's so healthy that she's able to do a podcast recording 10 days before her due date. I, I love that. All right. So let's go ahead and start with talking about Creighton, okay, um, and natural family planning kind of broadly a little bit. So some people are like, excellent. I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. Some people are like, I've literally never heard that word in my entire life. I think there's like a school in Nebraska named that, like related or not. Anyway, so why don't I open the floor for you to talk about what NFP even is, um, why we're having this conversation for people who are discerning marriage and not yet married, um, just kind of why it's something that's worth focusing on and worth knowing about. Yeah, so NFP stands for Natural Family Planning, and there's an even better term to use because NFP is like one application of these methods, but the more broad term would be fertility awareness-based methods. And so that would be an umbrella term that covers all different methods that help teach women and couples about their cycle and their reproductive health and fertility. Um, And so natural family planning is one application of that. It can be used for family planning purposes naturally. Um, So it can be used to achieve or avoid pregnancy. It can also be used to diagnose, assess, and treat infertility or other fertility issues. Um, But more than that, and even long before that, it can be used by women who are single anyone from the time that they get their first period um, through menopause until they hit menopause, it can be helpful for. And so that in that season, while someone is still discerning marriage and not yet married, it might be really helpful for them to chart their cycle um, so that they can understand their health in a greater way and take care of their health in a greater way. So I've done 
plenty of intro sessions and um, work with women who are not married, but charting their cycle has been really helpful for them to manage their health in different ways. Awesome. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because some people, this might be the first time they're even yeah. hearing. Like, I mean, I didn't. Know, so you said yeah. fertility awareness. What did you say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Fertility awareness based methods. Based so methods. Okay. It's basically. Yeah. So it's methods of becoming aware of your fertility and reproductive health. Um, so NFP, natural family planning, it can be used for family planning purposes, but it can also be just be used to manage your health. So for example, I recently in November did a introductory session for a group of nuns and it's <laughs> applicable to them in their season of life because they still have a cycle and they're women. And so they need to take care of their reproductive health. And so some of them were like, oh, so is it normal that I throw up every month when I get my period? And I was like, absolutely not. That's not (laughs) normal. And that doesn't need to be happening. And so through using one of these methods, it can help these women take care of their cycle, whether they're single, whether they're in religious life, whether they're married, literally at any season of life from first period until menopause, like I said. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Okay, so let's flesh that out a little bit more because I think there are a lot of people who... um, well, let me let me say this in a different way. Our culture is very anti women's cycles um, because they are very pro letting people kind of or encouraging people or supporting people, I guess, or whatever, and doing whatever they want with their sexuality. And a lot of people see fertility as a um, a negative thing and something to be stopped. You know, like you have this healthy body in a woman, but you're encouraged sometimes to take medicine to stop that healthy process like there's just this culture without maybe without even like thinking about the fact that that's what they're doing or maybe they're doing it on purpose I don't know there are people who have like sucked in this idea that the feminine cycle is bad Mm -hmm. and needs to be fixed Mm -hmm. and I think this fertility awareness based method of approaching your reproductive health I mean that that's incredibly important not I mean it's incredibly important for women it's also incredibly important for I think men to have a different mindset toward the woman's body like we learn from an early age a little bit but it's usually taught in the context of like giggles and and grossness and awkwardness in middle school like for a lot of people you know so why don't we just like spend a little bit of time talking about that you know maybe some people are really uncomfortable maybe some people are intrigued but don't know how to be in that space and how to see it as a good thing Mm -hmm. just yeah. Why don't you just, I'm just going to open the floor. You just take that where the Holy Spirit leads you. But that's what I want to talk about. I think that's, that would be helpful for people to hear. Yeah. It's really important for everyone to have the edu- education. It's really important for these classes to be part of, um, so sorry, my computer is dying and we're just going to plug it in really quickly. Perfect. I'm going to turn. Okay. Is your husband helping you? Look at that marriage, you yes. guys. So great. <laughs> yes, he's here. He's so helpful. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, Good catch before it actually died. This is real life, you guys. My producer told me I'm not allowed to cut anything out, so you're probably just going to get to watch this. Welcome here we go. to life. This is real life. So <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's okay. It would have been awful if it died. So we're okay. Yes. Here we are. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So yeah, these are classes, this is information that everybody should have. And it's so sad that we don't. And every time I do an introductory session for Creighton, for anyone, especially, I would say especially men, um, a lot of times, unfortunately, men aren't super eager to be there, especially when they're coming with their fiance or their wife. Um, A lot of times they're not so sure about what it is or what they're getting themselves into. And so when they come and then they sit through an intro session and then they always, the response is, why didn't I know any of this? Why didn't I know (laughs) that women's bodies work this way? Why didn't I know that my body works this way? And most women also don't know a lot of this information. So this is all such essential health information. And it's really sad because it's not, I don't fault any doctor. I think that they all have such good intentions, Um, but they are not taught in medical school about these fertility awareness-based methods. They're mostly taught that, oh, the calendar rhythm method, that's archaic and it doesn't work. And I would agree with that. It is archaic (laughs) and it doesn't work. It's not accurate. But thankfully, since that was a very long time ago, 
Science and research and technology has progressed so much since then, and we've learned so much about women's cycle and we're able to accurately and successfully identify when a woman is fertile and infertile naturally so that she can do any of her intentions or just understand her health, like I've said. So, um, but in medical schools, because I, when I went through my training to become a Creighton practitioner, a lot of the women that I was training with were doctors and nurses and had been through this extensive medical training. And they were like, we didn't learn any of this in school. Mm. And so a lot of times doctors just don't have the information to share with their patients and birth control is given as the only option. If you have a cycle issue, if you're not getting your cycle, if you're bleeding for more than seven days a month, if you have significant pain, significant PMS, if you're throwing up like that one sister that I was talking to, if you, um, a lot of people have really bad, especially with endometriosis, which is a reproductive health condition, they'll have really painful periods and really intense symptoms and it'll keep them away from work and away from school and all of these things that are not normal and they don't need to be just putting up with it, but they either think that they just need to put up with it or they're told that the only option, the only way to manage these horrible symptoms is to go on birth control and then that will fix it and that will make their problems go away. And it doesn't make their problems go away. It just (laughs) masks their symptoms. So it's really important to get to the root of why is your body giving you this symptom? There's something wrong. And that's where charting your cycle can help and can come into play is that you'll be looking at what is my body experiencing? What is my chart telling me about what's happening in my cycle? And we can see a lot of things about the hormone levels, um, about potential issues through the chart. And then whenever I notice as a practitioner, any issues in someone's chart, then I will refer to a doctor who's trained in Creighton um, to support them on the medical side. So there are doctors who are trained in this. It's just a very specific training that is not as common as a regular OBGYN training. And absolutely something you can do before you're at a point where you want to have a baby, right? Like those sisters who are never going to pursue pregnancy, obviously. That poor girl, woman needs to not be throwing up every month, right? She can go to a doctor and get healed. And if it wasn't for the practitioners like you guys on the front lines who are able to to really walk with her and and alert her to the fact that this isn't normal, she may never find a doctor. You know, she made, she's done, she's probably been her whole life, you know? And how many of you guys out there listening have symptoms that are not normal, but you think they're normal because you've just been Mm -hmm. told they are or... Anyway, so this is why it's so important to talk about this before marriage, because it is not just a fertility issue. And I love that it's, you know, that NFP isn't even the the phrase that we use anymore to talk about these. I love that you taught mm-hmm. me that because I think you're right. It's just like understanding the body. So um, as far as these intro sessions, so if someone's engaged, they will be going through that and learning it. Um, if they've never done it before, mm-hmm. they'll be learning it as a means of their family planning, you know, to cooperate with the Lord and to discern their family size. But if someone's not engaged, um, what I always encourage people, and you can tell me your thoughts, I always encourage people not to start charting together as a couple until they're engaged. But as a woman, she can chart her cycle mm-hmm. whenever. Mm-hmm. But if a man is interested yeah. in this, like a boyfriend's interested in this, or even just someone who feels called to marriage and recognizes the poverty of his education when it comes to the feminine body, is the intro session the appropriate place to get information? Um, or what, what do you, what do yeah. you advise? Yeah, I would recommend an intro session. So whenever I have um, a woman who's not engaged or not married, if she's learning, I always encourage her, if she's in a serious relationship, especially if they're dating and discerning marriage, always encourage the boyfriend to join at the intro session. Um, We do intro sessions. It's a general overview. It's a PowerPoint presentation. So we're not getting into the specifics about each individual woman's cycle yet and the follow-ups. And so this is just, it's anatomy, it's physiology, and it's, what are you looking for that's indicating to you when you're fertile and infertile? And everybody should have that information. So men are always welcome to intro sessions, friends, brothers, boyfriends, whoever. Um, <laughs> Love it. And dads. Girl, know, I was going to say girl dads. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, we invite everyone to the intro sessions. And then I would say if a woman's not yet engaged, then um, probably best for her to do the follow-ups uh, individually until the time that she gets engaged. And then her fiance can join her. 
Awesome. Okay, so we're going to switch because we have a limited time. We're going to switch to talking about mental and relational health. So I mentioned she's a therapist, a marriage and family therapist, but she also, of course, will work with individuals. Um, and so she has an understanding in individual issues and relational issues and general mental health. So let's talk about that. It's the beginning of the year. Um, for some people, the holidays were awesome and they love them. For some people, the holidays are really hard and they've just come off of that. It's a brand new year. There's a lot of this kind of cultural mentality of like, okay, new year, new me like here we go um and i think mental health is becoming something that people are more aware of and we're also entering like the dark and cozy and you know wintry time of year or we're in it already depending on where you live um i have a good friend in canada who started it starts snowing in october so she's been in it but there are some you know like this time of year can also be hard for people from like a weather perspective a mood perspective so why don't you just talk let's talk a little bit about the importance of mental health and relational health and kind of just how to prioritize that in the season yeah, these are really important. Mental health is health and relational health is health. <laughs> so they're just important, just as important and just as essential as physical health, as your nutrition, as your exercise. Um, it's, it's just as important to our overall well-being. And so sometimes when we talk about, I mean, practically how we can start to take care of this is so many different things. It might be therapy. So it might be individual or... Um, it might be individual or couples therapy. It might be self-care and self-care is something that, as you're saying, mental health is becoming more important. People are talking about self-care a lot. And sometimes that makes people roll their eyes. Often when I see social media, I mean, when I see self-care talked about on social media, it also makes me roll my eyes um, because of the way <laughs> that it's talked about. Here's my, Hello. so welcome to my real life. Y'all, you're discerning marriage. I um, always say, welcome your kids in when you need to because the people who are discerning marriage need to see this is real life. Hello, Orly. This is real life. This is Orly. Um, so um, now I have to remember what I was saying. Oh, self-care. <laughs> so I prefer the term self-stewardship because Ooh. it is so important for us to steward ourselves and our lives well. Our our it's such a gift that we have our bodies to take care of our minds, our relationships, all of these things are gifts that we're given and we need to take care of them well. And so we should steward them well. So I just prefer that term because it's not so overused and um, watered down as self care can be. But it's really important to think about what is the state of our health in these areas. So how is my how is my mental health? Um, am I suffering from mental illness that's very serious and needs to be taken care of am i just really stressed and really anxious am i feeling um just down and sad or depressed most of the time like what is the state of my mental health and what is the state of my relationships are my relationships healthy are they leading me to god are they um, helping me grow are they giving me life or are they depleting me are they draining me? Are they unhealthy? Do I need greater boundaries? So just taking an assessment of what is the state of my mental and emotional and relational health can be so helpful. And then we can see like, okay, what areas are struggling? Am I neglecting any of these areas? Do any of them need attention? And some of them might be really big areas that need like major renovations. Mm. Um, and some, some relationships we might realize shouldn't be part of our life anymore because of the impact it's having on us. But some of them, it might just be that I need to implement greater boundaries or some of it might be as simple as having a conversation with somebody about mm. the way that things need to change in order for this relationship to become more healthy. So it doesn't have to be super dramatic, but it is important to just assess like what, what are my relationships looking like right now? What is my mental health looking right, right now? And, and to continue to assess that on an ongoing basis because it's such an essential part of our overall health and well-being. Absolutely. And I love that you just kind of combine the two. Like mental health is its own thing, but mental health is also very much driven by the relationships that we have in our life mm -hmm. um, and how how the relationships are functioning, how they're going, how you feel in them, um, whether they're life-giving or whether they're draining. So I love that you just kind of, mm -hmm. I was thinking they would be too, but you definitely just mm -hmm. push them. And I think that that's such a good uh, that's good awareness to have, especially going into a new year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're so interconnected that that all of these different areas of our health are greatly um, dependent on one another. 
Absolutely. So you clearly wear multiple hats. We've just talked about this. So um, it allows you this opportunity to have this really beautifully integrated perspective on holistic mm-hmm. health, right? Um, so many people mm-hmm. specialize in just one thing. And so they have that thing to talk about really well. But you have done a, a really, really neat thing in learning a number of different kind of ways to promote health in the human person. So I would love to hear what you have to say about what it means to be an integrated person and really um, kind of with a focus on the fact that all of my people, the vast majority of my people are not married yet. And so what what does that look like in this season of maybe having a little bit more freedom than they'll have once they're in their vocation? Yeah, we are integrated people. We often (laughs) try to segment ourselves and we often look at ourselves in our different segments and different areas of our life, but we're integrated. God designed us to be integrated. And so if we're only taking care of our spiritual health, but neglecting our physical health, we have these different components to ourselves. We have our spiritual health, our mental health, emotional health, relational health, physical health. Am I forgetting anything major? Maybe. But we have all these different Sounds components right. <laughs> to yeah, to our health and well-being. And sometimes, a lot of the time, we'll focus on one. And one of them is really important, but it might be at the expense or the neglect of another area. Mm. And it's really important to just see the whole picture that they all impact each other. So if I'm doing all this work in my spiritual health, for example, but I'm neglecting my physical health, if my physical health is declining or it's not doing so well, or if my mental health is not doing well, it's going to impact my spiritual health. It's going to impact my relationships. So it's just important to see the whole picture and to know that every single area impacts the other and we can't separate them from each other. So if my relationships are unhealthy, it's going to affect my spiritual life. It's going to affect my mental health. It's going to affect all these things. Um, So we are integrated. We can't separate ourselves from other parts of ourselves. Um, And so it's important in this season, whatever season that is, but for your um, listeners and followers, the people who are discerning marriage and who are not yet married, it's just important to see all of those different areas, all of those different parts, and to see if you are um, letting any of them fall by the wayside and to looking at integrating them just looks like yeah, taking an inventory of how all of these different areas are doing. And is there a way, for example, like something that I talk about in therapy with clients often is the way that our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are interconnected. Mm -hmm. And so everything that we think is going to influence everything that we do, everything that we, (laughs) he's escaping, (laughs) everything that we, um, Uh, everything that we do is going to influence how we think, how we feel is going to influence how we think and what we do. And so um, in the same way, like our whole person is interconnected in all of these different ways. And so it's important to be mindful of that, take inventory, pay attention, make sure that nothing's being neglected, that we're not dismissing any certain areas because we think others are more important. We were made as a whole person. So we have to take care of our whole person. So how often would you say to do like an intentional inventory like that? What's helpful? Hmm. It could be helpful to do that often and it doesn't have to be anything intense. Um, It doesn't have to be anything intense or crazy, but just looking even weekly um, if possible at like, what, what am I doing to take care of these different areas of my life? You know, um, I've heard it talked about as a wellness bank account. That's something that oh, nice. um, I, uh, if anyone is familiar with reform wellness, they talk about wellness bank accounts and just looking at what, what's the state of my wellness in these different areas and what am I doing that's contributing positively to these different areas of health and wellness? And what am I doing that is pulling from these areas that's depleting me in these different areas? So it can be done often. I wouldn't let it go, you know, too long because things can so easily change and we can be really intentional with, for example, like I could be really great at um, being consistent with my prayer routine for a month and then I might 
metaphorically or actually chuck my rosary <laughs> and not um not the state of my spiritual life could take a significant decline really quickly um so just assessing if i'm yeah how am i paying attention or like especially in life transitions or whenever changes happen that's always a good time to especially assess so i've been having a certain health routine for myself overall um, over these past months through my pregnancy, as soon as my daughter is born, life is going to look very different. And I'm going to have to continue to reassess what's working and what's not working and how am I taking care of myself and how do I need to be taken care of or ask for help. Um, so I would say especially in transitions, but we always need to be assessing these things. So weekly, that's more than I thought you were going to say. But what's cool is if, you know, you're going to mass on a weekly basis, that could be a really great time, you know, to just take a few minutes before or after mass to think yeah. about like where you are and take a little inventory. Yeah. So the areas you said were physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and relational. Were those the five that you were thinking would be a good kind of holistic approach? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's so much overlap. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get caught up in like, what's mental versus emotional or you know <laughs> i wouldn't get caught up in like what falls into each category specifically but just checking in with yourself how have you been feeling how's your mood been um how's your mental health how are your relationships and like i said it doesn't have to be anything crazy you don't have to write anything down but the same way that you think about do it you know doing a daily examine it kind of would be similar to that and just examining our life overall and the state of our health I love that. And this is part of why I love my target audience of people discerning marriage, because I feel like if you told a mom that, like, try to do this every week, a mom would be like, oh, okay, like, there, there's no way that's happening. But before you're in your vocation, you have this luxury of time. And I think a lot of people who aren't in their vocations yet are really almost sometimes see that as a negative, like, oh, I wish I was married, or I wish I had kids, or I wish I whatever. But you have this luxury of time that you just won't have when your time isn't your own after you're in your vowed vocation. So what a great habit to build when you're single, when you have that time, because then once the habit's built, it's much easier to do it, to continue on through the transition as opposed to picking it up later. So I love that. Okay. So last question. I always ask my listener or my, my listeners, I always ask my guests um, before we go for a practical tip from our conversation that someone can just take away. We may have given it to them. You may want to use the do this every week thing. But just in case something else has come to you, if there's a practical tip that someone who is discerning marriage could take away today, like they in this episode and they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to implement this change into my life to get me closer to this goal of discerning marriage. Well, what would that be? Yes, I do have a practical tip. So this episode is coming out January, right? Uh -huh. of January. Yep. And so my practical tip would be to take a, if you haven't already, to take a introductory session class for um, Creighton or another uh, nice. fertility awareness based method. <laughs> but I happen to have um, a free intro session that we're doing virtually for the Archdiocese of Miami um, at the end of January. Oh my gosh, perfect. 25th or some sometime around then and anyone can sign up for it. So I'm going to share the link with you so that you yes, can yes, share yes. it with your community and so if people are looking for just like a general overview of basics, Creighton basics, you don't have to get started. You don't have to start charting. There's no commitment to anything. You just sit there for an hour and a half and listen to the information and you're going to learn so much mm. if you're not familiar and if you haven't taken a class mm. before. So that's mm. what I would recommend as a practical tip. Perfect. And for both men and women is what you said earlier. Like anyone yes. can do this. Yes. Oh my gosh. How perfect is that? Okay. I'm so excited about it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to and have that if, if anyone happens... If anyone happens to be watching that has like teenage daughters or nieces or Ooh, goddaughters, yes. or anything, like invite invite all the young women and older women and men and seriously everybody needs to have this information. Oh, what a good idea. How fun. Okay. Thank you so much. I always consider it such a treat when we get these special guests of kiddos who come into episodes because <laughs> what we're doing here is we're talking about discerning marriage, right? And so many people have this idealized vision of what it means to be married. And we just have this kind of fairy tale mentality around marriage and family and having kids and whatever. But the reality is... It's a lot of work. And sometimes you just want an hour to get to have a podcast session with your friend, but your babies are and, like, no, nah, I don't want to nap anymore. Give me that pin. You're not looking. I'm going to like. See, 
Yeah, he's about to light the Christmas tree on fire. Perfect. Um, and Excellent. so this is our real life, but kids are such a gift and so beautiful. Um, and toddlerhood is a wild ride. So um, it sure yes, is. Welcome to my life. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you were willing to just keep going with the interview instead of shutting it down because I am. I think this is a really helpful thing for people to see who are discerning marriage <laughs> that there is so much beauty. But sometimes the beauty looks like pulling a lighter out of your toddler's hand in the middle of an interview. So yeah. thank you so much, Melissa. I'm so grateful. You guys, I will get that link for you. I will put it out there um, and I'll give you all the ways to find Melissa and all the different excellent avenues that she has of things to offer you guys. So until next time, stay close awesome. to the heart of Jesus and be not afraid. Bye.